Katie's gently oh, yeah. nudged me. Awesome. So if you're just joining us, we are doing a word cloud of what feedback means or um, kind of association words. And I think if you want to keep that going oh, um, throughout, mm -hmm. then at the end, we'll take a look back and see how this picture has grown um, after our presentation. So going back into here, <clears throat> we, in our research for presenting to you today, I found this amazing article called The Art of Giving Online Feedback. And as Rachel said, it says all that we wanted to say today, but a little bit better. <laughs> so <laughs> we are using it at, we used it as a kind of a springboard um, to start our conversations, but also really want to provide the resource for you guys too. Um, it's pretty concise. It's like, I don't know, 10, 12 pages um, and is a great resource with more details and sources kind of from the scientific side. Um, and going right in, heading over to Rachel, we're kind of going to summarize and follow the outline of that article. Um, and like I said, at our own. Yeah, thanks. And um, hang on. I think part of one of the really interesting things about the article was that it really made us think about how we give feedback and why we give feedback. Um, and it re I'm sure for a lot of you, uh, you have had experiences of like really good feedback, positive feedback, helpful feedback. I should say this way, positive feedback. You had experiences with positive feedback where maybe it wasn't super effective because you didn't get an A, but the feedback was just like, good job. And, or maybe you have like, I have, uh, you know, a break into cold sweats when I think about writing my dissertation and the feedback I would get like the verbal berating and like the red track changes for just, you know, years on end. And it's, it's like not helpful. Um, so we want to focus, hopefully we all want to focus on constructive feedback that it's, you know, effective, that we're getting our students to improve their performance by correcting errors. We're getting them to reflect on what they know and what they need to learn by, you know, through our feedback and, you know, and doing so motivating them that, that uh, uh, you know, going beyond just assigning them a grade, helping them, um, you know, figure out more than just why they didn't do the assignment right but how they can, you know, get better and how we can get them to explain things better, think more clearly, et cetera. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to share their least favorite form of feedback or just a terrible feedback experience or, you know, that feedback that you really remember from a, a mentor or a class. Um, you're welcome to drop it in the chat. Oh, Sakina, yeah. Do you want to unmute yourself or? Whoops. Yeah, I, I spoke too soon because you said drop in the chat and I raised my hand. So I no, apologize perfect. for that. Um, yes, when um, I was writing my thesis and my uh, thesis chair just had a few words in red, she gave me a big zero. She said, next time use the APA book and then slash the whole thing and I had to redo the entire job. And I cried for two yeah. And was that helpful? <laughs> no. Was that motivating? <laughs> Funny thing is, is that it made me learn APA and then I became the APA go-to for everyone <laughs> in my cohort. So there is silver lining. Yeah. And I think Hannah and Katie are kind of putting in chat those same ideas of getting really great, uh, really vague feedback or no feedback at all um, that you really work hard on or just like, great work. Couldn't read their handwriting. Yes, always a problem. Um, you know, and Hannah, your your statement there that this is not a paragraph is a great example of negative feedback. Like, what if you don't, you know, you don't know how to write a paragraph? <laughs> I know that seems like a really simple bar, but uh, you know, what if you haven't had the same education that we have had um, in our experiences? So try to, you know, uh, you know, think about the types of feedback you're giving. Um, yeah, and it probably was a paragraph. <laughs> You know, it looks like a good paragraph too, and if it doesn't go beyond why it's not a good paragraph or a good um, uh, 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 bibliography, it's not very helpful. And Skeena, do you have another thought? Or is your hand just still up? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, you're totally fine, I just wanted to make sure. Um, okay, so let's, um, you can feel free to keep sharing your stress feedback points from <laughs> in the chat if you want to, um, but we'll go on to the next one. So we thought we would also, you know, think about the medium that we're teaching in an online teaching is, you know, what if you were, you know, Blythe teach intro to ballet online in the spring and how would you like to re get feedback on something to me that is like panic inducing dancing in front of other people or like having to record myself dancing in front of other people. Um, you know, how would you 
want just think about the ways you could get feedback on something so uh do we go to subjective life is that the word that i'm okay using but yeah and something that's hard to learn so i think she looks great <laughs> it's all about the attitude right <laughs> um so what we're talking today about is some of those best practices and how we can um be more diversify our sense of feedback to be more engaging and humanize the online interface um we pulled out this quote clear effective meaningful feedback is a robust way to foster learning especially when teamed with personalization especially especially um, using the name or calling out specific details and we'll give you some um, hints or tools for that as we move through. Um, this is one table within that article there that again just has some hints that you can do and as what as we talk about through the semester or through the presentation here. Um, just even incorporating one little piece or one new piece at a time because all these new online elements can seem really daunting. But using using your students name frequent that one's challenging right getting into a routine frequent immediate balance we're going to go into details specific those yep. um, positive tone and then promoting thinking throughout your feedback um, so it's not just those concrete statements that you're handing out. Um, we're in this next bit what we're going to highlight kind of four angles of this prompt and frequent the tone of your feedback specific and then balanced. Um, interactions as well. And I think a lot of these things we're going to highlight are things that some of you dropped in the chat about things that didn't work for me, like really vague, or I'm sure all of us have waited a really long time um, for feedback. And I know that it's really hard. Prompt and frequent feedback is hard for us. It's a lot of work for us. Um, but we're going to talk about ways to uh, uh, make it easier. Um, you know, I've gotten emails from students that if I don't get back, grade their stuff immediately, you get emails like, did I do something wrong? Did I miss it? Like the second you get, oh, sorry, I'm still on the, the frequent feedback one. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, and they, they're they just, you know, they're worried that they did something wrong. So it's, it's how do we balance that personalization that was talked about in the first week or the first day of Catalyst from our, our guest speaker about, you know, using their names and being specific with uh, everything that else we're doing. So we'll talk a lot about scaffolding throughout this, but do encourage scaffolding for um, to help you provide that prompt and frequent feedback because you're not just dumped at the end of the semester with one giant project. There's those little bits that I'm sure a lot of you are already doing, but bringing the project down, um, you can give them better feedback, help them develop their skills um, and catch those small mistakes. So why are we scaffolding for students? You know, think of it the same way. It's like, why don't you scaffold your assignments for your yourself for your feedback? Like, I'm doing this so I can give them better feedback. So think of it, you know, both ways. I also um, tell them, which I didn't forget to put this on slide, but I am very communicative about when I grade. Like, so they're not emailing me why I didn't grade. Like, especially, you know, I have especially these semesters. All my classes are online. I have one synchronous and I spend Monday and Tuesday getting that class together. So it's when you hand me your assignment on Monday, my first thing on Wednesday morning is starting to grade. So there will be that day, um, you know, lapse. It's not that you didn't mean anything. And then I tell my students, they kind of go through cohorts. So I do tell my, my students, my later classes, like you guys know I'm going to get caught up. You're low on my priority because <laughs> they just know me at that point And it's easier for me to you know, communicate to them. Um, so now we can go to tone. Tone is the hardest. Um, you know, there's nothing like getting a draft back that's just all track changes and a big X through it, or like, this is wrong. Like, that's not helpful. Um, so you want to think about creating that tone of feedback that inspires people to learn and to work and to improve, you know, where we lose so much of that, those verbal clues when we're online. Um, and we're, the presentation before, we're talking about having those videos on and off and um, you know, you lose so much when you can't see people's face in those verbal and, and physical uh, uh, cues. Um, so we'll talk about Canvas audio and video recordings. And these have just been a great way for me to when I'm tired of typing things out, I can still give them those audio and, and cues, audio and visual well, cues without um, just being like tired of my writing and try to finish it out. And then we'll get into some other specifics too. So thanks, Blythe. Over to you. Oh, over to me. Um, specific feedback is also going to be most helpful for our students, for our learners. Um, specific enough so that 
the meaning is conveyed, but also that it can be interpreted and utilized in the future. One way to do that is posing questions, how or what would happen if you expanded here, asking for further explanations. So not only are you giving feedback, but you're also getting um, them to personalize or um, self-reflect on their responses as well. And then referring to resources within course content. So I ask for MLA format in my writings. Um, and anytime there's a funky formatting, thinking of them using moving forward with specific formatting, I say, refer to the link. Here it is, it's in module one. So I'm trying to refer to um, resources within that course content rather than send them out. So the, the learning is cyclical and it gives them the tool, where is the tool? to use next time. Kind of again, that scaffolding, right? Um, that Rachel was speaking to specific using their name. So it's not, it doesn't just feel like a robot on the other end, um, which, you know, in these different presentations, I've heard that that um, students sometimes think that it's just everything is auto graded. So trying to use their name for that specificity. Um, and one way to really enhance specific feedback is a response back, uh, excuse me, a response bank, which um, Hannah was already talking about in the chat. So exactly an amazing tool. Um, and the specificity of feedback in audio and visual and then rubrics, which we're going to go into a little bit more. But Rachel, you want to tap into the bank here? Yeah, and, and, and I know a lot of us use this and uh, uh, it's you can, you know, I've realized that I can build out a lot of the responses to have these things like I just have to add in that quick example from their project. So don't feel like, um, you know, uh, all the things in your response bank have to just be like, you uh, didn't do the assignment right. It's like, well, you didn't do the assignment right because, you know, you probably know the three reasons that people weren't doing the assignment right or things they could improve. So you can add them in, but just make sure to personalize it. Like all the hard typing's done. You just have to add in that sentence or so. And I think organizing, like um, you can yeah. see, we just got a file here or that um, for that one time assignment or even you know, like assignment A within a module. I know I get these, um, I, I know I give the same feedback over and over again um, or similar feedback. So then you can use this and really tailor it to um, a specific quiz answer, et cetera. The next thing um, here is balanced feedback. And we've probably all heard of like the compliment sandwich um, that you are uplifting as well as guiding forward. And I liked particularly um, this, this little graphic here that I found because it's got more, more layers. And what I really like is this bottom piece of bread here, provide support, right? So we're not only giving the feedback and that constructive um, feedback sandwich with the feel good meat and lettuce there, but we're also providing support. And I think that that really keys into the equity of online learning because, um, you're you're giving your you're you're offering yourself as a resource as well um, in moving forward in the learning tools. Um, yeah, great. Okay, cool. I think too cool. that kind of gets at the um, just that like support side of you don't just want like, we want to be you know constructive in our comments, but that doesn't mean everything has to be overwhelmingly positive. So you know, getting that feedback, great job, B you know, is not as helpful as uh, highlighting the things they're doing well, but again, providing support so they can address the things that they need a little bit more work on. And my dance students know that I always um, give a but at the end. I'm like, great job in your leap, but <laughs> <laughs> so kind of making it a, a making it a game or, or a, um, a fun tool of teaching because everyone knows what's coming <laughs> after that. <laughs> Um, so getting, so we kind of looked at some of those best practices and then how, how do we do that, right? So we are not going to, this presentation today isn't about the detailed how, but hopefully we'll provide some of the resources if you want to get into the hows um, with some help, uh, like Canvas help links and some tutorial videos. Starting with rubrics. Yeah, so I'm sure I know, um, sorry. <laughs> A couple of people mentioned that they use rubrics um, in the chat, um, and I'm sure that 
you know how rubrics can speed up your grading. I love using them for things like discussion posts, um, just because you can kind of hit all the buttons and go from there. Um, but what if, uh, like, if you could go one forward? Um, there are a lot of real benefits to your students to having rubrics for, you know, on more substantive assignments than just on uh, discussions. They can, you know, help you understand expectations, components of assignments, be aware of their learning process, help them see how they're progressing. If it's, you know, a scaffolded project, you can, um, uh, you know, see which areas you improve on each time. Um, and then because you have the rubric there that you're just like punching, not punching, uh, tapping the areas of, uh, um, the ratings for the criteria you have, it gives you more time to give more detailed or, or feedback to that. Um, one thing, and then if you could go to the next one, um, Blythe, one thing that uh, I always, I used to find myself saying to my husband all the time is like, I wish they just did this assignment right. It would make it so much easier to grade. But part of that too is rubrics will help uh, make your assignment clear and rubrics can help you determine if your assignment is really clear and understandable to students. So if the student looks at the assignment and hands it, hands it in and it does not match your rubric, that's telling you your rubric is probably not good for that assignment. So taking that time, um, you know, making them available for the students, but also um, I've done this before with my students and some of my intro classes, having them make the rubric for, you know, a project proposal or a project or something like that. It's like, if here's my assignment, you make the rubric, and then I'll show you my rubric. And that was, you know, really eye opening. It's like, whoa, this part is really not clear that, you know, no one mentioned this one criteria. So I need to make sure that's clear. Or it's something to students, you know, teaching them how to read assignments. So I think um, Tasha was talking about in her presentation earlier about, um, you know, teaching students how to learn. It's like if not everyone's giving their students rubrics, so if students can sort of figure out how to read assignments, it can be really helpful. Also very helpful in sub subjective disciplines um, to make sure you're being fair. I think it's, yeah, consistent, maybe not fair, but consistent, well, hopefully fair, <laughs> consistent from student to student. Um, and uh, what else? Student feedback, you know, they tend to uh, appreciate rubrics a bit more because then they know, um, what to be expected. And like I say at the bottom, they can be very time consuming to create. So if we go to our next slide. Uh, one, there we have all these help links um, from Kansas Guides and some of our just own videos built in. So if you haven't built a rubric, um, uh, you know what, here's how to do it. And then if you go to uh, how to add them to your assignments. Cause I'm sure those of you that you have used rubrics have noticed if you don't check that box for use for grading, they're basically useless cause then you have to enter the grade bin. Anyway, so next slide, please, Blake. Um, you know, don't start from scratch. Ask other people in your discipline, look, you know, the Canvas Commons, I'll just search online. Um, you know, use what the students give you. It's maybe that they had a really good idea or, you know, notice that the assignment, you know, like, why are we taking this course if you're not even a greatest on X? And you're like, oh, that is a good point to the rubric. So there are a lot of resources out there that you can edit, adapt, because um, it is very, I hate filling in the um, ratings for each criteria. It just, it's so stressful. But the more you do it, the more you can just use what you have and edit it and move forward and hopefully get to that rubric that actually works for you. Um, so next slide, please. Yeah, one more thing on this Canvas oh, yeah. Commons thing that I found is, I liked that the um, the comments label things, label the items by grade or their often. So if I'm looking for a really loose kind of simplified rubric, I can look for ones that are in like the ninth grade, 12th grade range. And then if I'm looking for a really higher level thinking on something, then I can look for that graduate um, level grading. So you can tailor the amount of words or specificity in your group rubric kind of by gauging the grade level. So that was kind of a trick that I had. That's a great idea. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I talked about was rubric speed up your grading. So you don't have to be writing out all the little details. They also are a great way to lead you into um, giving better feedback with audio or video feedback to really help you address that tone and that personal personalization. So you can see that button at the bottom and the, the GIF, you know, pops up. It's really easy just to go into what Blythe's going to talk about and add a little video on. So you're not, when we say like audio video, it's 
really easy. Canvas tries to make it as easy as possible for you to do this so you can give better feedback and more uh, constructive, helpful feedback. Yeah, so that middle tool there, it looks like it's like a little oblong with this very tiny triangle in the middle. That's that, um, the one that she's clicking there. This other one is the voice to text tool, which also is great for um, kind of giving that quick. Is um, the, what was I gonna say? You're asking is the uh, video and audio feedback okay if they're using cell phones? Is that the question? I, think, uh, I believe so, and we'll see. Yes, yeah, so we'll see some examples of what they see on their end. Yeah, and I think that, um, yeah, it's all built into the smart system. So I would assume, yes. Um, so just prior, uh, 24 hours ago, I was calling it all Canvas Studio feedback. And then I did a little bit of research last night and used that Canvas help chat line. Um, and <laughs> with, the, with the new rich text format, the improved system in Canvas, this component here is not actually using Canvas Studio. It's using the rich format text or rich text format um, component. So these videos may not be visible within Canvas Studio. So I think I was thinking, Katie, maybe we could do a teaching tree on that. Um, anyway, digression. But Canvas audio visual feedback for a general term there. Um, Audio feedback is just like it sounds. It records your voice into that component. So talking about tone, cycling back to that tone, that in-person element, um, the, the humanized element. And then video, of course, expands upon that. And in this Canvas help guide talks about this. And then this how-to video is, oh, there, there it is. Explain the workflow that there's one that Rachel did with a little bit of walkthrough and it's super helpful because um, it, it's like six minutes and really talks through the components of that. Um, and then I just thought I'd send a little bit of this. So I found that I found late in the last semester that the audio or the the video particularly was really helpful for my dance students and I'm incorporating it a lot more. Um, but just rather than typing these words, just listening and watching how different it is. Um, Especially in the height of the Grand Batma is that those toes are kind of flared up and not engaged in the length of the toes. They're kind of, <laughs> too tall. They're kind of um, here as opposed to stretching all the way through. I've got my funny little slippers today, but you can kind of see that. So I chose this little clip here because, and now this awesome screenshot, because of the imperfections. And we talk a lot about like the imperfection of feedback and online education, but this truly is. So you're, I'm humanizing. I mean, they're seeing me in the, the Zoom class session. So they, they know me as a dancer and a mover, but not making it about like a pristine image or the exact right words. You know, I had to move my camera around a little, I had not ideal situation, but still I'm communicating that feedback in a humanized way with a positive tone, you know, like trying to, to hit all of those um, terms. If you wanna watch the whole video, there it is. And I just, um, this was within studio, but I put it on YouTube for the purposes of this um, presentation. So it was accessible for today. Um, then also here within the studio library, kind of figuring out the difference. You can just do those video clips like Rachel mentioned, or yeah, with the, the GIF and the, and the arrow. But um, here, if you are using studio, what you can do is create um, these library modules. So this was for a midterm. You can see I did them all in one afternoon. Um, but then I have all the feedback there for the students and I can find it at a later point. It's a little bit less useful, this, the specific videos, than the, um, the feedback bank, like we were talking about a little bit ago, but it saves them here in studio as a, a resource. And this link here goes to um, Katie's studio techniques. And so I was like, versus rich text form, but it's all there and it's all, audio and visual feedback, which is improving that interface, that, that connection between the students. Is this me? 
Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's both of us. <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's me. Oh, sorry. Uh, so like we've been harping on all of these things that we're doing um, makes it more personal, makes you more human. You know, like Blaise is saying that her videos aren't per perfect. Um, sometimes, especially recently, I'm very tired of seeing my own image. And for me, this was a, a couple of falls ago, but you know, just using the audio comment, like I can, you know, they're still hearing me, they're still hearing my tone. Um, and notice I like right in there, it's, you know, click, I should have done it better, but like click on the audio file, you can tell it was the end of migrating these things. So this is what they see in Canvas, they just see that little play button. If it was a video, they would, I think they see your little face or your little image, uh, thumbnail. Um, so they can go in there and you can see the students can give you, have given me a lot of positive feedback on it. It's like, you know, the student, responded back to comment you know thanks for the commentary and I've had students like say or send me emails that are just like this was you know really helpful and really explained it um like I said or in, in any discipline you could write out like you have to work or you know this was pretty good work on you know this one thing but as Blythe was in her video explaining exactly how to point the toe it's she's doing that it's not perfect it's done um, but if you, if she had sat and tried to, in my mind, if I had sat and tried to type out exactly how to explain to point the toe, it would be a lot more difficult than, um, you know, just Blythe just, you know, uh, getting a little bit off balance, showing it there, uh, you know, a little more, uh, real and humanizing. Um, and the other thing that they talk about in the article, like this may not affect, this is a real positive end of the article, but, you know, the studies didn't necessarily say that, um, uh, it affected their final grade, but I have found that it uh, really boosted like engagement with students and interaction and maybe not their total final grade, but the students that actually clicked on it and uh, used it improved maybe that project. And we have, um, I meant to see this about five minutes ago that there are videos on how to show students how to find this feedback. So that might be helpful um, too. Um, yeah, anything you wanted to add, Blake? No, I just think reiterating that, um, again, referencing the article didn't show grade improvement, but, you know, for our populations, I think that communication and the exchange with specific students and humanizing and reaching out um, and learning where additional support is needed and creating those relationships to maintain enrollment and build um, rapport with your students. Yeah, I will find that. I think it's Kelly Spoon's video, but I'll find it for you, Dora. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I can't, I think I'm starting here. So um, another element of giving feedback, especially online, I think, is self-survival for us as educators. Familiarizing yourself with a couple of these tools that you can use on repetition on you know kind of on repetition in unique ways um dispersing the load through scaffolding like rachel mentioned of you know setting up the 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 patterns of feedback earlier on this in the semester and then continually referencing it back to it or giving that link for the mla formatting like i mentioned so can setting it up and then referencing to it as potentially an easier way Rachel. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, I, uh, building your personal calendar. I'm a big fan of this and I don't do it. Um, I <laughs> wish I did this better, but understanding uh, your, you know, how you're going to schedule in your giving this feedback, but also understanding your assignments across the semester. Um, uh, what else? Sorry, Blake. I like lost my notes on what I'm supposed to be talking. Am I talking about the next two, or do you already talk about your personal calendar? What no, you're on about? calendar. I think okay. we're at the other one here. Okay. Um, so the calendar has been really helpful. At least if there's a week I can't get out of having a million things, it is. Um, I can prepare mentally prepare for it. Um, cool. Um, and then I think building your course slowly, you know, we got so many tools as, as many of us moved to the online format for the first time last March. Um, and then through the certificate course for online education over the summer, I felt really bombarded by the options out there. So 
building your close courses slowly one at a time or or engaging with one form of feedback if you, if you had no feedback in the fall maybe just doing some audio feedback as an initial step um, or typed feedback or the feedback feedback bank um, but building it slowly so that you're doing it in kind of small mouthfuls is really a way for self-survival. Um, a little bit of prep, play a little bit more prep. Ugh, oh my goodness, pays off. Prep effort <laughs> pays off. Um, you know, rubrics that can be used in other courses. Blythe and I, when we were putting this together, uh, we were brainstorming. Like, Blythe, why don't you just do a video where you're showing one move that you can use over and over so you don't have to like always create? Because, you know, you saw that Blythe did like individual movement based several minute feedback for all of her students that took her online dance class, which is commitment, but it's time. So it's just how do you build up the banks? How do you um, uh, incorporate things that are going to help you across uh, many courses? And then, and that variety, kind of maintaining your own sanity as an online, um, as an online educator. I've lost my sanity. Sorry. <laughs> um, and just you know, going back to that, it's the same idea of like I get the videos got uh, real, just challenging for me, and so I just switched to the audio because I just felt like, you know, in Canvas you can't if you're doing it in Canvas Studio you can't have a backdrop, and it's like oh it's not clean, and I'm tired, and it's, you know, middle of the night. So just doing the audio, it's a great uh, option as well. Um, and the one of my kind of self survival methods was, go, was to go from typing responses to the voice to text. And I found that that was really a great tool. You have to go back and edit it. Um, but it was it, that was one of my strategies mid semester last fall. So the variety of methods so that you don't get bored or in a rut or um, you know, overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then in this feedback, we, we were really quick, Rachel, that was great. <laughs> we looked through it. Um, coming to the end, we just have a little bit more here. Um, oh, and then I want to loop back to that word cloud in the beginning. We popped that Mentimeter back in. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, so, you know, like we covered the types of feedback, some best practices there the delivery, and then making a difference, making a difference in your student's life as well as your own life. And um, hopefully the more and better feedback isn't necessarily more work too, but um, more engaging perhaps. Um, I liked this here, I pulled this out. Feedback can streamline, humanize and promote, right? And so trying to do, it's kind of, I guess what we're all about here. Um, and then, <laughs> making it fun too, right? So we've got this cute little graphic that Rachel found for us. Um, <laughs> you know, emojis, or <laughs> emojis. Um, but, you know, engaging and in, in, um, making someone's day or making someone smile with that compliment sandwich or feel better about themselves and their learning path, et cetera. So Rachel popped that um, word cloud back in there. Let's, um, here it is, refresh. So, okay. awesome. So yeah, encouragement. I like that. Progress, progress, support. I like it. Does anyone want to share a uh, speaking of feedback? We're always open to uh, your feedback on uh, feedback you found really effective, or the types of feedback your students really respond to. Kindness. Yeah, I like that too. Oh, and Katie put in that uh, Google Doc on why some more feedback for digging deeper into this. If you want to detailed notes, detailed notes like detailed feedback to them, or yeah, yeah. And that's why for me, I like doing the audio feedback because you know I just get tired of typing, like tired of typing, and so you can just pop on there and you're giving them a little encouragement. And then, you know, you get to like the seventh one you've done and, you know, knowing your students in class. I remember when I was doing audio feedback for it and I just kept, yeah, I kept like stumbling over my words. So I think I was on like my fourth time of redoing it. I was just like, Blythe, listen, <laughs> this is the fourth time I've tried to do this. We're just gonna power through. I'm sorry when I trip over myself, but I want, 
I'm just tired today. So. And I think that the um, the keynote speaker that Katie referenced there, um, she also talked about the vulnerability as being seen as courage through from your students too, and that really or in any situation, I suppose. But I think that was a, a poignant reminder to myself of you know, when I'm recording videos or feedback, I'm like, okay, Norma, I've done this one three times. I'm gonna try it one more time. Here we go. And that, just that level of honesty because um, they're having the same struggles with upload speeds and with you know getting three minutes into something and messing up. So humanizing and um, engaging on their level which is really our level, right, is, um, can be really encouraging to And the, the, the last thing we forgot to mention is the equity piece. Cause I usually put this in whenever I talk about audio and video feedback, as long as it's directly to a student through their uh, response to their assignment, you don't have to worry about captioning or anything. Of course, unless that student needs captions. And if that student, you know, has vision impairments, maybe uh, uh, video feedback, you know, you can, you can ask in your student survey in the beginning, like, how do you, I give video feedback, is that going to work for you? Um, so there's, I uh, forgot to mention that, I was just thinking about it, but there's, I always say that, then I look at Katie and make sure she's still nodding that those are the rules. <laughs> but positively in terms of equity, um, not all of our students come from written cultures, right? So that verbal culture or a movement culture is, can be really engaging and capture someone that may have otherwise been disengaged. Cool. Take dance history. <laughs> <laughs> so any other thoughts or comments anyone wants to share before we all go back to getting our Canvas courses ready? Okay, do you want to bring Henry back out? You you like Henry, don't you? I do. <laughs> well, ready to get, I'm not even. I'm nowhere near close. Kane, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Henry's my. I guinea love pig. him. Our family guinea pig. So I um, I love the guinea. I just think it's so cute. <laughs> he is pretty cute. He did not love being in my lap for that long on Monday, though. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put the link to the um, yeah. Google Slides cool. for today's yeah. share out because currently they are looking a little. Um, in need of 